Good afternoon. Today is the 18th of October and I'm absolutely privileged to be able to offer you a walk around of this brand new 2020 MGZS 1 litre exclusive automatic. I actually did a walk around and a full review of the 1.5 manual version of this car, which was in the same colour but a 20 plate uh, back in July when they were first uh, launched. This actually isn't a car from Summit Garage. I mean, it, it was bought at Summit Garage, but it's actually owned by uh, one of my channel viewers, Stephen, and his, and his wife, Bev. And um, they literally have this car about two days. And uh, we're here at Hartsell Hayes uh, near Nuneaton, which is where we filmed a lot of stuff in this area. Uh, the Tivoli's just poking out there. And uh, we're just going to have a look at this. Planet Auto had one of these on their channel quite recently. And... Uh, I um, was expecting to wait a little while to film this, but actually the chance has come today and I'm very privileged uh, to be sort of here. So the main difference is actually between the manual and automatic version, other than the engine and the gearbox, are the keyless entry. And if we open the door up here, it looks very familiar, apart from in the centre console, there's no conventional handbrake. It's actually got um, an electronic parking brake. Obviously, the automatic gearbox is just there. The uh, start-stop button um, is up there. There we are. Uh, same kind of 10.1-inch screen and digital instruments. We'll have to just grab the keys in a sec to look at that. But we've actually got an insert here. Uh, there's where the handbrake would be. And it says new MGZS, which it is indeed. It is new. The pre-facelift automatic version is a car that I was very privileged to have from MG Motor UK themselves uh, back in August and September 2019 and there are full reviews of, of, of uh, that car in walk around on my, ch on my channel but one of the things you'll see straight away about that is we've got different wheels on this car we've got a different back end on this car um, it's still got the same dimensions, and so the interior space is very similar. It's a very spacious car. So if I just open the door and I see just how easy it is to get in, I mean, there's no bother at all. You've just got to watch your head slightly on here, but it's nothing like a, I don't know, a Capri or something. And here what you have straight away a brand new sort of centre section of this. Two USB ports there. That's for the start-stop, that's the automatic uh, shift lever. It's a bit different from an electric one, if you're familiar with the LCV. Um, red stitching on here, which is lovely. I really like the red stitching, like a pre-facelift MG3. We used to have a 2014 um, MG3, and um, Stephen and Bev have just recently actually traded their 2016 MG3 in for this, and so the nice familiar things you see are really good. The stitching along the, uh, the dashboard there, and the stitching, which is uh, along the door just here as well. Same window switches as before, um, same door locking buttons, and these nice kind of Audi style vents. Those, those are really good. Soft touch material on top of here as well. I don't know, I'm not so keen on this fake stitching, but it's not too bad. It's a nice sort of feel. And a very comfortable seat. It's actually got electric adjustments on here. I don't remember if this is heat. I don't. I don't think they actually. Yes. They are heated. Thank you, Stephen. I can never remember about these things sometimes. I've actually, got heated heated seats. Um, this car's done. I think a hundred miles. So, um, that is that is one thing. Something that they haven't changed in a, the, the pre facelift ones, and it is a little bit annoying, is the fact that you can actually pull the wrong lever down here quite easily. The bonnet release and the fuel cap release are exactly the same lever in exactly the same place. So I will pull the bonnet release in a bit, but we're just going to just have to be a bit careful with that. That's just something to bear in mind. Obviously, if you've got the uh, the EV, you don't don't have that issue. Uh, same sort of mirror switch. I'd say it was actually in a facelift MG3. Uh, cruise control stalk is there. Uh, I've got the um, volume buttons for the stereo and uh, the phone button there. And these operate the, the menus. We'll have a look at that in a second. Right, I'll see if I can uh, open up the glove box, which is, is the same as before. You can't fit the secret mission documents in there. See lots of sort of MG bits and pieces because um, Stephen and Pev are huge MG fans. They've got um, another MG as well and a Rover 75. 
which obviously which definitely meets with my approval. So if we go round to the boot, can open this up using the MG Octacon badge, just like on any ZS. I have reviewed a lot of ZSs in my time, an awful lot of them. Um, same space in here as on, as on a pre-facelift ZS and on the ZSCV, 440 litres. And we've actually got in this car this very natty little boot line. I've not seen one of those before. That's rather nice. If you lift this up, you can actually alter the height of this boot floor. Um, got the jump cables in there in case you need them and also oh that's fantastic actually got a spare wheel in there that i think is an option this car was a was a cancelled order um a chap didn't actually want it in the end and he, so there's a few accessories that he would have but he would have specified when he bought the car um and that's that's brilliant I, I like the spare wheel i like this mat that's fantastic back of here um I think the reversing camera actually comes out the badge actually on this bit. This car's got 360 degree camera on it, which I think is amazing. And if we go down here uh, to, the, to the side as well, the chrome bits on the door handles, they weren't available from the pre-facelift ones, only on the ZSCV. We actually see we've got blind spot detection and a little camera just there. So very, very safe car. And it did have, I think this is five star UN cap predicted to get on, on this particular one. Um, the tyres are different actually on this, the wheel design is slightly different. It's still 17 inch wheels, but it's um, with bigger profile tyres, which gives the car an even more comfortable ride than before. And they are comfortable to, to ride in these cars, um, but also it just fills the profile of the, of the wheel arch a little bit better. We've got the SAIC light technology here, full LED headlamps, adaptive lights on this car, which is brilliant. All sorts of different sort of safety features on this as well, uh, pedestrian alert, Bicycle detection, lane keeping assist, lane departure warning, tra um, traffic jam assist. Haven't got the full MG Pilot in this, I don't believe, unless I'm wrong about that. Um, it's got all kinds of other things as well. Door pockets are pretty big. You can fit all kinds of bits and pieces in there. The material on top of here is still the hard plastic. It was on the, on the, on the pre face of cars, but when you look at the cost of one of these, I think um, this... This car, as, as uh, in this colour, is about £21,000 with the automatic gearbox and this Battersea blue paintwork. Compare that with, like, a, I don't know, a Volkswagen T-Cross or, or something like a Skoda Kamiq, and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds cheaper. Right, let's have a look at the engine. So this is a General Motors developed um, one litre three-cylinder turbo engine. It's actually similar to what was in the previous generation Vauxhall Corsa before 2018, uh, what's called the Corsa D. In this particular car, it develops 111 brake horsepower and uh, 0 to 60 is about 12.7 seconds. Now, that figure actually doesn't represent really how the car drives. If, if you drive a manual one of these, a 1.5 manual, they have a lot of time about 11 seconds but and about 105 horsepower but they feel so much slower than this this has so much more torque it's a uh, twin clutch um, automatic gearbox in this in this car and um, having driven a pre of one for a week they drive really really well there might be some minor emissions tweaks to this one i'm not exactly sure but um, they're pretty much the same the access in here is actually pretty good for a modern car. There's not not too much in here, and of course, standard seven-year, um, eighty thousand mile warranty on it on all new MGs. So I don't think they're going to be lifting the bonnet too much on this anyway. We'll just uh, put that down. I'll just do that again in a second. Um, just below the MG badge in the front, this a hugely enlarged grille, which is on the face of the cars. Uh, you can see there's a little camera just there. Um, for the 360 camera. We'll have a look inside and um, have, a, have a go with that in a bit. But uh, yes, I, I'm very fond of these, uh, very fond of these cars, particularly in the exclusive trim, which means you get the things like the silver roof rails and the 360 camera and all kinds of things, but the diamond cut wheels. Um, but there is also the Excite available and um, you get the 1.5 engine with a manual gearbox if you want to save a bit of money, uh, if you really prefer a manual. But my choice has always been on these, the automatic. I've forgotten about this car, but actually it does have things like rear cro uh, cross traffic alert as well. Um, just going through all the warnings on here, little instruments. And I'm not going to I'm not going to rev it. So I don't want to disturb everybody else in the, in the car park where we are. But you can see digital rev counter, digital speedo, and if I just uh, move this, I think down on here, 
that's actually that's that one there. So if we go down, there you go. Oh, there's all the journey information. It won't have the best economy at the moment because the car's only done 100 and 129 miles it's done this car, so it's really, really new. It's much newer than most press cars. Tire pressure monitoring as well. Um, there's the battery voltage meter. And uh, yeah, it tells you which, which is on the lights, the lock, doors, locks and things. If you go to the central screen, you've got the 360 degree view camera, which I'll just turn on. Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic? For some reason, obviously this car's blue, it um, comes up on there as a white car. If I just put it into reverse, then got the reversing camera as well on there, which is very useful. Put it back into park and just put it back on there so you can just take a look. There we go. Yes, there we are. So that's actually the front camera you can see at the moment. And it shows you on this side. So we can actually have 3D as well if you want, which is a bit, it's a bit disturbing actually, but I don't like that so much as that one. Um, but yes, yeah, so if we go back, we turn that off, we can see Apple CarPlay. And for the first time, actually on a ZS that's not electric, Android Auto, which is a huge thing for me. Uh, this is MG's iGo satellite navigation system, which takes a while to boot up. Might be a little while, but uh, there it is. And so it shows where we are. We're at Hartsill Hayes. Also, when you want, even on the, the, the navigation page, it does actually show you as well uh, the air conditioning as, as, um, is, is on there. And that's the uh, temperature. I, I think this car does what temperature gauge it does. Unlike on MG3, which just has two lights, you actually do get a, a proper temperature gauge. And it's a nice, clear system, this. Uh, I personally would just run with my phone with Android Auto and use Google Maps. But this is a pretty good system. It's pretty straightforward to use. And if you want to go back, we can actually touch that home key just there. It's a bit dark. I might actually turn the lights on so we can see. There we are. It's better. Um, what you can do is adjust the stereo volume here. Um, this car doesn't actually have climate control as such. It's got... It's got... Um, it's got air conditioning I don't personally mind that kind of thing I'm not I'm not really that bothered it also says wind level which I always find very funny um, the temperature can be adjusted by using this control uh, up and down as well you can put that up and down just using there it's a bit better than the HS actually the HS you can't adjust it as easily um, but there's all kinds of things you can play with in here and one of the things you can do on any ZS um, and it's petrol anyway, is if you go to the, to the car, I believe you can change the steering weight. Which, as you see, you look what you've got blind spot detection, lane change assist, rear cross traffic alert, rear driving assist, you've got all kinds of things in this car. Um, and uh, we've got comfort and convenience, got follow me home lights as well. Uh, driving and maintenance, I believe, yes, here we are. So steering's in normal mode at the moment. I always have the car, personally, in dynamic mode, always, because I, I don't like really, really light steering. I mean, if you put it in urban, the steering is unbelievably light. Shifter feels very good. Um, the five-speed manual gearbox in the 1.5 version of this car really isn't, um, isn't too bad, but this is just a lot better. It's definitely my choice. And you can actually turn... The 360 camera on and off with this button here. It's quite difficult to see because the gear is in the way, but you can also turn the traction control um, on and off here, and that there's a little button for the, the hill descent control. Although this car's front wheel drive, uh, they, ha they haven't f completely forgotten that this is actually an SUV, and so you are able to do that. A fan can be turned on and off there. That's for the uh, demister, and there's a rear window just there. Right, I think we'll just uh, get in the back and take a look, and I'll just turn the engine off. Right. So again, just like, just like the front, it's very easy to get in the back. Stephen's pretty tall, actually. He's well over six foot, so this is his driving position. And I've still got loads of room. I'm five foot eleven, so I'm no way as tall. Um, but I've still got loads of room. One thing I would do is just adjust these headrests up a bit because it's in the middle of my back if I slip back, but I just do that, and that's really good. Got a few friends in here today, including, is that two Morris Bears you've got? Yes. Two Morris Bears from Summit Garage as well. I'm sure John Newey will enjoy watching this video. Um, we've got uh, two USB ports in here. Again, you, don't, you didn't get any on a pre-facelift, and not just a central armrest, it's nice and soft, but some storage in there as well. One thing you don't get is the centre armrest in the back. 
Um, my son on Tivoli has that. Also, the fad room's brilliant, but there's no sunroof option apart from on the electric uh, ZSCV, and um, there's no light in the back. You know, you can put one in. I've seen people actually do this, but the the lighting's in the front, which is it's just something to bear in mind. If you if you have children or something like that, it's just something to bear in mind. It's not necessarily a huge disadvantage, but um, it's just something to bear in mind. Big map pocket, unlike a Tivoli where there's sort of little bungee cords, you actually get proper map pockets, and you get them on both sides of the car as well. Massive, massive sort of door bends down down there. Uh, electric windows in the back, of course. Uh, more of this sort of, I don't really know actually know what this is. It's some it's some kind of sort of vinyl material, I think. Um, sort of chrome flashes and the, the door tops are a bit hard, but honestly, with the price of this car, it doesn't really matter. And a lot of, a lot of the, the cars that are more expensive than this also have hard uh, touch rear door tops, so you know that's not really much of a problem. One thing you don't get bizarrely is is um, any kind of seat belt height adjuster. So I think the same as in the MG3. I'm not personally finding it to be a problem, but again, it's just something to bear in mind. So there we go. Um, the 2020 MG ZS one litre automatic exclusive. I think this is the best spec for one of these. I think this is the best engine combination if you don't want an electric one. Um, this is a fantastic car. It's addressed some of the issues which um, I would have brought up in in the review, you still get a few of the bongs and beeps and things which I don't personally like, but you know, if you watch this channel for any length of time, you will know that. And so we're gonna to have to say goodbye to all the friends in here, including the two Morris Bears. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for a full review of one of these. Um, we are planning on doing three new MG models at Summit Garage, uh, probably next month, and one of them will be one of these. Um, so it'll be full episode two jacket reviews on this and two other new MG models. Um, but thanks again to Stephen and Bev for allowing me to film their lovely new car that they've had for two days. Um, and uh, yes, don't forget to uh, follow Lloyd Vehicle Consulting on Instagram, instagram.com uh, forward slash Lloyd underscore vehicle underscore consulting. And also Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. Thank you.